Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Brooke Davis Anderson, Executive Director, and Christopher Alfieri, Co-Vice President of the Board of Prospect New Orleans. They have generously agreed to share some of their experiences with us. I'd like to thank you both for joining us today. Delighted. This is a very, very exciting series of events that you have in New Orleans. And this is a, such a wonderful city. And, and frankly, the music is so near and dear to my own heart. I, I'm just so excited that you're here to talk about Prospect New Orleans. Talk about how this, this, uh, this very unique event came into being. Well, <laughs> um, Prospect is a citywide exhibition. It's a large scale triennial of contemporary art. And it's a post Katrina idea. It's an idea that was born, um, by, born out of uh, discussions amongst the arts community in New Orleans. What can we do to contribute to the cultural economy and the revitalization of New Orleans after Katrina? And the art world, uh, the gallerists and a curator at the Contemporary Arts Center, Dan Cameron, along with other advocates for arts and culture in the city, came together and really saw that this was a city that could not only benefit from a triennial, a large scale exhibition of contemporary art, but it could also contribute to the cultural discourse about contemporary art because of the um, preponderance of music and culture and Mardi Gras and all that goes along with it to say nothing of the architecture and the food. So um, the, it was really Dan Cameron who ushered in the first one um, with a board that supports it then and still now today. Chris is one of the founding board members. And we're so you were part of that founding founding board. I, it's, it's fascinating to think about what those discussions were like because it was in the post-Katrina world. I was traveling right. around the U.S. and I was encountering the, these, these artists who had made their home, but they couldn't, yes. they couldn't perform anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't take credit for being in the original discussions that created the entity, but I was in the on the original board. So Dan Cameron actually worked with um, a couple other community members, a particular gallerist named Arthur Roger was very closely involved. Bill Fagley was a curator of African art at New Orleans Museum of Art. And that group, and who, among others. And Bill actually did a, the first biennial in New Orleans back in the 70s. Yeah, that's true. A long, true. long that's, time ago, which yeah. has sort of laid the foundation for believing that it could happen again in New Orleans. That's true. New Orleans Museum of Art had a triennial going back to the 1850s. Uh, so there's the tradition is already there. But it's interesting mm -hmm. because New Orleans has always sort of been a decorative art and antiques market. Right. Mm -hmm. But it has all the raw material that you need for great contemporary art. I always like to think of it as very new art in a very old city. And we're coming up on our tricentennial right now, which is just a perfect marriage of beautiful, amazing contemporary art in these non-traditional art spaces around the city. And that concept has continued to build upon itself. And originally it was sort of intended to pull New Orleans out of its economic malaise, right, by creating something, an art tourism. But it's turned into something else entirely. Mm -hmm. I mean, that has certainly occurred, but there's just so much going on now. I also love the sensibility of, of taking the idea of art belonging in some place, which, when did that happen, right? It should be, it, it belongs every place. Mm -hmm. and, right. and you create art and you exhibit art where people are. And, and it should be in neighborhoods, it should be in houses, it should be, it should be in storefronts, it should be in the stores itself. That's really where art belongs, and that really is modeled through Prospect New Orleans. Absolutely. Right. Prospect New Orleans is an organization with no bricks and mortar. So everywhere we are located when we open is a relationship and a partnership with somebody else or something else. Um, those, that possibility of being in a storefront, being on a street corner, being in a barber shop, because I think that's one of our goals for Prospect 4, being in the streetcars is something that we can do most efficiently alongside uh, in, in collaboration with the artists. I mean, every discussion for a project like this starts with artists. And so we have this opportunity because we plan over a three year cycle where we bring the artists into the city for sometimes a few weeks, sometimes a few months, and they really get to know and immerse themselves in the culture and this place of New Orleans. 
And then they'll say, hey, we want to put a sound piece in the streetcar because we want to touch all of the New Orleanians who are commuting every morning and every evening back and forth between work and home in that streetcar. Or we, and additionally, to say nothing of the tourists who are also using the streetcar. And suddenly we find ourselves with this perfect venue for contemporary art. But it's an unconventional venue for contemporary art. And that is something that Prospect is really equipped to do. That's true. Now, this is really a, an interesting aspect here. You, you bring artists in. Now, of course, artists are not speaking with one voice. They're not all the artists do not get together and have form a consensus that there's going to be a piece here and a piece there, right? So you, you get this sort of whiteboard kind of thing where people are throwing out ideas and they're making suggestions and they're, they're proposing certain certain things. How are, is the selection undertaken? Is it done by other artists or is it, is it some sort of a, a, a juried or judgmental process? How does that work? Well, it starts with the artistic director of Prospect. So we have a numbered exhibition, obviously, Prospect 1, 2, 3, right. now we're in 4. And that's really where it generates. That's where it starts, the concept. And actually in the last two uh, iterations that we've had, we've had a theme. And the Prospect 4 theme is? So um, Trevor Schoonmacher is our artistic director for Prospect 4, and he's at the Nasher Museum at Duke. And um, he has titled Prospect 4, The Lotus in Spite of the Swamp, um, which is a quote by a jazz musician, since I hear that you love music, um, Archie Shepp. And Archie Shepp was asked to talk about jazz, or you know, what is it about jazz? And, Somewhere along the line, uh, as Trevor has found, Archie Shep said, well, it's the lotus in spite of the swamp. You know, it's the beauty and the harmony in spite of the murkiness and muddiness of the swamp, as Trevor likes to say. <laughs> and for Trevor, not only is this a reference to jazz, um, of course, New Orleans being one of several um, homes where jazz was, was born, but uh, also, he, Trevor's thinking about our current state of affairs right. and how artists have the capacity, he thinks, and certainly Prospect New Orleans believes, to show us beauty in spite of um, the current affairs of the day and in spite of the economic conditions of now, the political situations of, of our society. So um, it's meant to provide a sense of hope that Trevor believes artists can point to. Talk about how the dialogue transpires as you stage Prospect for, and as you wrap it up at the end. How does that? How does the interaction with the business community and and different citizens and schools and kids and and elderly people um, unfold? It sort of takes off of your your question. Kind of made me think of something, which is that we are always running into these moments in New Orleans of surprise. But we, huh. as New Orleanians, just kind of take it for granted. I mean, you'll just be walking <laughs> to the office and somebody on a you know, two-story bike with blue hair will go by and it won't even phase <laughs> you, you know? That's just the city that we live in and it's just a beautiful um, old colonial jewel, right? You had the French princes and the island slaves and the, you know, Spanish governors and so many other communities that you know later sort of settled uh, in New Orleans and so we offer that not just um, to the public that comes to see the art but to the artists and that's a really interesting dialogue and that's what I've always been very interested in about Prospect is what Prospect does for the local arts community mm -hmm. because it really has been a great catalyst I mean that community was producing their collectives there and for-profits and non-profits and those three miles between Elysian Fields and and uh, the Upper Ninth Ward are home to per capita just tons and tons of these amazing little arts um, organizations but they really take energy from what we do. And they credit Prospect One as being uh, the impetus to discovering New Orleans and sure. deciding to stay in New Orleans so that audience is an audience that um, really discovered New Orleans through this experience of a triennial. Several of them came down to work for the organization and to actually install the shows of Prospect One because there were 85 projects to install in 25 locations in, um, you know, in, in four weeks. 
So describe how that has unfolded from your perspective as a, a member of, if not the founding group, then the founding board. Well, you know, New, there's there's an, a saturation point in New Orleans. There's so much going on all the time. And uh, it's been a challenge to draw New Orleanians' attention to what we're doing as something different. But there's one thing that New Orleanians love to do, which is to make traditions. You know, you'll talk to people about Jazz Fest and they go to the same spot, they sit on their same cat blanket, they're at the same <laughs> stage every year, and that's you know where to find them. And it takes, my theory has always been, it takes three times to make a tradition in New Orleans. Mm. And New Orleanians now are beginning to embrace it. And also they're beginning to see that it's, you know, from, a, from an economic standpoint, it's, you know, putting people in beds and hotel rooms and right. it's, you know, it's, it's got a great economic, um, you know, engine behind it as well. Yeah. Right. And yeah. one of the things that we're thinking a lot about as an organization as we mature um, is we're thinking about permanence. One of the things we kept hearing is that we were up for three months and then we'd disappear. You know, nothing would happen. And, you know, building a relationship with someone, with an audience, takes more than just popping up every three months. So we have a program now where we're actively um, engaged in different audiences around New Orleans um, over the course of the in-between time, the time in between Prospect 3 and Prospect 4. It's less of a V-shaped right. involvement and more of a, more of a, a, of a curved involvement. Right, yeah. and I think the best example probably is the fact that we had so many artists in the Lower Ninth Ward. And I can tell you that I had never been down to the Lower Ninth Ward. I just hadn't. I wasn't afraid to go. I just had no reason to go. Because as I said, New Orleans is kind of like this knitted, you know, these neighborhoods and you kind of have your own corridor that you move in. Um, and it was a revelation for a lot of people, a lot of locals that went. And I think that that was culturally shining a light on what was happening in the Ninth Ward. This particular difficulties that that community was going to have to rebuild was a great success. Because if, if part of your mission and your purpose is to feature great contemporary art that is shining the light on issues and communities and people, we're doing it. Yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's a great measure of success. Yeah, Sometimes joy can only be known and not quantified. Maybe so, right? yeah. Chris Alfieri, Brooke Davis Anderson, thank you so much for sharing Prospect New Orleans with us and thank you so much for your insights. Our pleasure. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank it's you, Mark. Great. What a pleasure. Great. Thanks. <laughs>